this is Zorian at A-Team Inc. Uh, we are doing this best practices and key insights special on uh, simply and practically uh, implementing OKRs, objectives and key results, or simply uh, setting and tracking uh, objectives at your company. And uh, as you may know, uh, A-Team is a simple OKR goal setting, tracking and achievement platform uh, trusted by high performing companies globally. Uh, we are an expert on OKRs, setting and tracking and managing OKRs. And uh, today's best practices and insights is on how objectives or specifically OKRs are not tasks. And we see this quite often when uh, companies and managers uh, ward and even you know any employees on their teams ward their OKRs as if they're just activities or tasks. So a couple of great uh, thoughts from business leaders um, like Lou Gerstner. You may have uh, heard of Lou Gerstner. He turned IBM around and uh, he was also the CEO of RJR Nabisco um, and also the chairman of a major private equity company called the Carlyle Group. And uh, he wrote this book called Who Says Elephants Can Dance About Turning IBM Around. Uh, I really admire Lou Gerstner. One of his great quotes as a chief executive officer in a very uh, very sophisticated professional uh, business executive and manager, he said, never mistake activity with results. Meaning that being busy and just doing a lot of activity doesn't mean you're actually doing uh, or achieving results. And, uh, you know, there are a lot of, you know, a lot of analogies about uh, company employees being busy, but not actually busy on the right things that produce meaningful uh, and, and intended results. There's another quote uh, from a great sports coach, John Wooden. I'm sure uh, a lot of you have read his books. Um, they're, they're great, you know, books on leadership, on management that you can apply to businesses. He said, don't confuse activity with achievement. You know, it's the same thing. And I think you can see sort of uh, where I'm going with this, that achievement and results are really what objectives are about. about they're not about input of effort. Uh, they're more about the output of uh, success or achievement on what your business needs, which is the objectives. So let's dive into that. So let's define uh, goals versus tasks and projects. First of all, a task is like a single thing that you do. Uh, it's a to-do, right? And typically one person uh, can can do in under a few days and sometimes really under an hour. Uh, you can track your, your tasks and task uh, tracking uh, software um, like Trello, for example, or Jira or Asana. There are a lot of task tracking tools or that also track projects. Uh, a project is an initiative done by one or more people together and it requires multiple tasks to complete the project. Um, as you'll notice that both tasks and projects, they're about effort, right? They're focused on the input of effort uh, and activities, right? It's all about being, um, you know, creating activity uh, and, and then input, but not necessarily about the outcome and result. I mean, they're done in order to achieve a result. So what is more about results? Well, that's a goal. And we'll talk about how OKRs are, that's a, you know, OKRs are goals. So an OKR um, or a goal is an outcome that you want to achieve as the desired future state. It's not worded uh, in uh, terms of activities or efforts. It's worded in terms of the outcome. And to achieve the goal, you need to complete one or more projects. And a goal, uh, again, is not focused on inputs, on effort or activity. It's focused exclusively on achieving a result. Remember that OKRs are goals, they're not activities, as I just said uh, on a prior slide. OKRs are focused on results and the outcome and not uh, you know, on the means or the inputs to get to that intended result, right? So it's just different uh, articulation and thus a different intended uh, statement that you want to convey. And that makes all the difference, right? The, the way you word it makes that difference. And uh, an objective states what you want to achieve, and the key results are measurable and ideally quantified results. 
key results, right? So let's uh, get into the details of what I just said. This is, you know, the definitions of O's and KR's. The objectives, the O's, are what we want to accomplish. So in more detail than the prior slide summary statement, what we want to accomplish. Um, and uh, it's a concise statement, significant and action oriented. And key result is how we will achieve this objective. So you have this big strategic objective, if you will. So key result will state how we will achieve it and how you measure that progress uh, that you will know that you will have achieved that objective that you intended, right? So the, the formula for writing down OKRs from John Doerr, as you've read uh, probably in John Doerr's book, Measure What Matters, you know, we want to, and then you state the objective, and then as measured by this set of key results, and you have the measurable key results. The most basic way to write key results is, is referred to as activity-based. And I took this from uh, Felipe Castro, who, uh, who has a great uh, website and blog dedicated to OKRs and has written a really good introduction to OKRs. And he's done a really good job of uh, discerning uh, the two types of uh, you know, ways of you know, the basic one and the more um, complete and, and effective one of writing key results. One is called activity-based uh, and the other one is value-based. So let's look at activity-based. This is the basic one. And it's a measure, it measures the completion of tasks and activities or the delivery of project milestones or deliverables. Um, and you know, release beta version of the product, or launch something, or create a new training program. And uh, the the next uh, version of of kind of the on the spectrum of better uh, key results is value based. Again, you know, from Felipe Castro, I just thought he did a great job of of portraying this. Uh, and value based is measure the delivery of value to the organization or the customers. And value-based key results measure the outcomes of successful activities, right? So let me flip back. You know, this is about measuring the completion of tasks and activities. And this is much more about the outcomes. So the wording is different. And the typical structure here is increase or reduce some metric from, you know, X to Y, right? You'll see improve the net promoter score. Uh, or customer satisfaction, right? Reduce revenue churn or reduce some sort of cost, right? Increase uh, something else. Very different uh, wording. And Felipe also has this chart from his website where he juxtaposes activity-based versus value-based. Activity-based could be create the engagement program, but the value-based version of what you're trying to say is what you're really trying to achieve is improve the employee engagement from X to Y. Or in marketing, you could say develop three new landing pages. But why are you developing them? Ultimately, you're doing it to generate more leads, right? You're creating these landing pages to collect information on a form uh, from the website visitors, right, in online marketing. But why are you really doing that? So the effort is developing these three new landing pages. Uh, and the value that you get out of it is the the leads, right? Or, you know, reducing your customer acquisition costs because these landing pages are more effective at converting visitors to leads, right? So it's a really uh, good framework here to think about how to convert your activity-based to value-based uh, key results. Uh, and uh, Felipe Castro also, this is a snapshot from his website, is if you want to be results-focused uh, and not simply focus on tasks and you know if you want to avoid just doing a lot of busy uh, activity uh, and instead focus on the achievement or the success on the value to the company or the customer you want to kind of aim towards value-based key results um, and he gives other examples and in the end says look when setting OKRs focus on the destination not on the means to get there and I completely agree with Felipe I think this is uh, this is the absolutely ideal way to think about uh, OKRs. Well, how do you tease out these value-based key results? You know, think about the outcome, uh, figure out, you know, what is the desired outcome that you need, uh, 
and then you know do exercises like the five whys you've probably heard of that you know why are we trying to do it and keep going you know bottom it out you know but you know we're doing you know the landing pages to um, to improve our you know conversions but why are we improving conversion ultimately you'll get to we want to generate you know 1,000 more qualified leads in marketing for sales uh, at a B2B company great and uh, Felipe has another great tool that I really liked and uh, he says that you know if you basically write it like this if we're successful with this activity or initiative then we will achieve the following key results right so for example if you're successful with this marketing campaign we will increase our leads to 10,000 or 1,000 or whatever and basically that is one way to convert activity to actually the key results that you're intending to achieve and those are value-based where this is activity-based but while I completely agree with Felipe, and I think that is the right way to do it, the one message I do want to convey is that I think from what I've seen working with hundreds of executives and companies out there is that, and, and really, you know, myself before I even uh, launched uh, this company, uh, you know, three and a half, four years ago at this point in time, and what I've seen is that trying to get to perfect uh, sometimes defeats, you know, the ability to just get going, getting started. And uh, John Doerr wrote in his book, and I totally agree with him, you know, in the book Measure What Matters, that sometimes it could take, you know, four quarters, maybe five or six quarters to get really good at setting and tracking objectives like OKRs. Um, it mimics how you manage. You know, sometimes it takes uh, folks, uh, you know, a couple of quarters or over a year when they first begin managing uh, people early on in their managerial career, it takes time to get into that right cadence, right? And you don't want, you know, you're not able to make things perfect and become a perfect manager, um, but you just wanna do some basic things well. So done is better than perfect. So don't overcomplicate things. Um, another phrase to throw at this is, you know, perfect is the enemy of good enough. So try to go with good enough and what I mean by that is get going with activity-based key results it's okay get started get your team just started write it down don't try to make it perfect and I think keeping sort of this this uh, Kaizen philosophy this is uh, from Toyota production systems um, book uh, and concept of continuous improvement um, you know technology operations or operations management concept uh, just get going and improve over time. Start with a baseline. Uh, don't try to be, you know, ideal in, in your OKR wordsmithing today, uh, but but focus on how to improve quarter after quarter. Uh, and becoming effective at writing goals does takes time, right? So walk before you run. Uh, what I've noticed with a lot of people is that OKRs will fail to launch if you just try to be perfect right away. You're just going to lose a lot of time and then you're not going to launch and people are going to be scared to write it down perfectly because it just takes that practice, right, that you need for a couple of quarters, right, and perhaps sometimes four to six quarters. So initially, um, assume you're going to need a year and a half, six quarters of setting OKRs and start with that range in mind and don't expect to do it correctly the first time. Uh, as Lao Tzu, a Chinese philosopher, and he has a lot of wise uh, insights, uh, you know, this one, the journey of a thousand miles begins with that first step. Just take that first step. Get going with OKRs. It's probably one of the best tips that I can uh, share with anybody in management or with other CEOs in terms of uh, getting going effectively with implementing uh, objectives uh, and managing their companies and their teams with objectives. So launch OKRs and track initiatives and tasks and projects separately. This is another key insight. So you launched um, and you're measuring your objectives and objectives, again, they're different than tasks. Keep them completely separate, right? Uh, check in on your OKR progress once a week. Just take five or 10 minutes to look at your OKRs, your three to five objectives and key results. How are we doing you know, this week towards our quarterly objectives? And uh, just take five minutes, um, track it, see where you are in terms of, you know, are you 20%, 50%, whatever. Uh, but track your tasks and projects 
uh, completely separately and you can track them daily and uh, there are a lot of uh, task tracking tools whether it's a to-do list or you have things in your calendar uh, that you just want to do you know bake out time to do your tasks and projects or you use something like Trello or Jira or Asana or even Microsoft Project um, you know there are many different tools to track your tasks and they're all great some are you know better for for you know different types of tests and others are better for others but that's not objectives that's not OKRs and those are not meant to to have measurable uh, tracking of objectives and key results separate those um, processes completely right you don't want to combine them together because they're very different and by keeping them separate it allows you to focus in on measuring objectives and not just treating them as uh, just another busy activity Writing OKRs is challenging, so as I said earlier, uh, assume that you know from the very beginning that you're going to need that year and a half, and it's going to improve over time, but it's going to be challenging. So keep it simple. You know, go with activity-based versus value-based, um, unless you really want to invest the time and effort. And I, I think if you can't do it, but don't do it just for the sake of trying to be perfect because it's going to slow you down and may uh, detract from you know from you launching in the first place and you'll have failure to launch so the first time is the hardest practice makes perfect gets easier over time it's like muscle memory but no pain no gain right it's like you know trying to be a good manager you gotta it's discipline uh, so with that we wanted to make these lessons uh, short or at least not too long and if you have any questions or you want to learn more about okrs if you're interested in learning more about how a team software can help you implement uh, or make OKRs easier by by centralizing all the tracking and measuring and management of your OKRs and uh, scaling your your agile goals or agile OKR implementation throughout your company if you're interested in in uh, chatting and learning more about our product or just looking for more help on uh, how to implement them we're happy to help uh, just email us at hello at ateam.com. Here's our phone number. And uh, with that, thank you very much for uh, being with us today.